This is the Mend It Pass podcast with Chadwick Hayward, episode 12. Welcome to MendItPass.com. Let's get back to bed. Hi, Path Menders. Thanks so much for tuning in for the 12th episode of the Mend It Pass podcast. Today, I'm joined by cardiac rehabilitation nurse Shannon Farrell. Shannon is the volunteer director of small groups with the Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group. She follows a whole food plant-based diet as a means to control her own chronic disease states and has lost over 80 pounds in doing so. She's also experienced many other benefits by mending her path and leading a healthier life. Hi, Shannon. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you on the show. I came across your story on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Um, It seems like you've had some miraculous changes with uh, changing your diet. Do you want to start by telling us a little bit about where you were before you started having some health issues and what kind of led up to that? I uh, Yes, I was um, in my uh, 30s and I was very healthy. I played uh, competitive soccer for uh, all throughout high school and college. Um, and I was very healthy. I had actually reached a good uh, spot in my 30s um, and was playing. And um, I was playing in a soccer game. And actually, one of my good friends who was a goalie on the other team side tackled me. And I flew up and over and landed on my uh, left side Ooh. and uh, ended up by tour uh, L4 to 5. So, which was a traumatic injury, um, and I've always been committed to healthcare and trying not to have surgeries. Um, so I did a lot of investigation um, with testing, and I saw three doctors and two uh, recommended back surgery. But the one doctor was a good friend of mine and said, "I know you, Shannon, very well because I'd been injured a lot um, prior to this, and it ended up." playing in what the end result of what my uh, illness is. But he said, I know you can get around it, Shannon. I have complete faith in you. Uh, So I embarked upon a journey of healing my back without surgical intervention. And heading into this, this was nine years ago, heading into this, I actually was plant-based and didn't have a lot of support with it. And as my back started to get healthier, my overall health started to decline. Um, So it ended up, fast forward, I started having neurological problems. I started having a lot of heart issues. I eventually ended up not being able to control my own heart rate or blood pressure anymore. Um, I had a lot of syncopal episodes or passing out. And I saw a lot of doctors, and all the doctors said it was because I was vegan or plant-based at the time and really encouraged me to eat meat. And I unfortunately listened to them because uh, I ended up becoming critically ill, and uh, anybody that knows me knows that I'm very articulate, uh, and I normally can talk to doctors about what they should be doing. So what was your diet like up to that point? I actually, I was a vegan, and I have to say I was more along on the sides of the junk food vegan, but I've always been healthy, and I've always been plants are the predominant entity in my diet. They were, uh, a lot of my doctors were obsessed that I needed to eat meat to heal. Okay. Were you supplementing with like B12 or anything at that time? Yes. Yeah, I actually was. And I was uh, on a lot of vitamins. And um, I mean, I didn't eat a ton of junk. But yeah, I I called myself a vegan. Uh, I was a member of PETA at the time. and Okay. So I began to deteriorate and uh, ended up on 26 medications. And so this was after they talked you into... Yeah, adding meat back to your diet. Okay. Yeah, and now that when I look back on it, I just was like, I can't believe that I allowed them to talk me into that. But I was very, very ill. Uh, so the doctors actually couldn't figure out what was wrong with me because um, I had started to lose all types of autonomic control. Um, I was diagnosed, misdiagnosed uh, with several illnesses. Um, so they had worked me up for early onset Parkinson's, multiple okay. systems atrophy. I saw a geneticist, and there wasn't testing at the time to really determine what I have. 
now. Um, but I ended up on uh, three steroids, which then caused me to develop diabetes. Um, I had my high, I had very high triglycerides. They topped off at 459. Um, I had high uh, lipids. I developed rosacea. Um, I stopped uh, having the ability to digest foods. I develop a bladder dysfunction, which a lot of ladies don't like to talk about. And so I actually talk about it quite a bit now because of ladies and weight issues. But I uh, developed that um, amongst a lot of stuff. Uh, I also, the doctors had been going back and forth for about 16 or 17 years now, uh, whether or not I had lupus. Uh, so I was diagnosed with that. Um, I was worked up for ALS. See what else? Multiple sclerosis. So yeah, I was being treated, uh, and I had no no quality of life. I had a hard time driving. Uh, I didn't want to eat. It was crazy because steroids make you gain weight, make you retain water, and so I was yeah. gaining weight rapidly. Uh, in the course of all this, too, my thyroid, uh, I developed acute Hashimoto's. And my thyroid ate itself. So I was just a mess. Uh, yeah, that's quite the list of medical issues. Yes. And I, the crazy thing is, is even in all those darkest days, I um, am still a person that I am today. So very kind, nice person. Um, and a lot of the doctors with all the stuff that I had because I was so young, um, started, there was a couple of them who now deeply regret it because they know me very well. Um, but they called me a liability. So a liability in that they were scared to treat me. Hmm. So, and it was tough because in the course of all of that, I lost friendships. Um, and a lot of people had known me as being very healthy. And, uh, here I ended up 85, 85 pounds heavier. Then I was, it reduced me down to, sometimes I couldn't even tolerate sit, sitting up in a wheelchair uh, because the oh, wow. sitting part, I was having syncopal episodes sitting up. Um, so at points I crawled. Um, and it's it's hard too because I look back upon like pictures of myself back then and I don't have recollections of some of the pictures. Hmm. Um, but one of the most biggest parts in all of that is the anxiety and depression and the hopelessness and, you know, being treated. And I've talked about it on another podcast about how you feel as being an overweight person, um, you know, being yeah. treated poorly. And uh, so that was very tough. So um, now I've made it a mission to help people, but I ended up, what happened to me was, is uh, I had to figure out one night on the computer what I had myself. Okay. And I had to find out who was the number one doctor in the United States for what I had. So I figured it out that I had autonomic dysfunction in the form of pastorotostatic tachycardia syndrome or POTS. So I actually did my own, we call it a poor man's tilt test. So I did it at home with my own blood pressure cuff and heart rate monitor. And I found out that I had it. And, that was, and so, so POTS for anyone that's listening and don't know what that is, that's where you have an abnormal heartbeat when you go from sitting to standing, right? Right. Yes. And um, so POTS is, yes, when you are sitting and you raise to a standing position, so it's about a 30 beat jump. So 30 heart uh, beats faster. And in normal people, when they stand, they jump up just a little bit. Your blood pressure yeah. dips a little bit. But then you get homeostasis very quickly. One pot that doesn't happen. So as I would stand, my heart rates actually would jump, uh, sometimes even double. Oh, wow. And your blood pressure has to drop. And so I... Currently, I don't have, uh, I mean, my blood pressure is very, very low to begin with. And so I would drop even 60 over 40. Um, and I, and of course, I would um, pass out a lot. So mm. I uh, figured it out that was one of my issues. And one of the number one doctors in the world for that is Dr. Blair Grubb out of uh, the University of Toledo. And um, he at the time had, I think, a one year waiting list and I ended up 
finding someone that had been treated by him. And luckily, I'm in Detroit, just north of Detroit. Um, so he isn't that far from me. And I begged uh, his office to move me up. And I said, I'm a nurse. I'm a cardiac nurse. I love the heart. If you help me get back to wellness, I will pay it forward. And um, I did. I got in like about two months later. And I said, I will take the meds that you give me that will help me stand. I'll go on a um, exercise retraining program. Yeah. Um, and I will start to make some changes. And this was about like two years in, I believe. And he will tell you to this day that, you know, I was one of his definitely star pupil patients. So what did he prescribe? Um, initially, like there is uh, astronauts that um, develop POTS when they actually come back into the Earth's atmosphere. So they, okay. they go through a, a muscle retraining program that is, um, it really functions on the legs and the core of uh, rebuilding leg muscle and strength. And um, so that's how I teach a lot of my patients now, because our legs are actually very important um, to help facilitate getting our blood down. And then, of course, with venous return. And in some POTS patients, um, they develop issues uh, with venous return. Um, and one of my main issues was uh, my venous returns, we call it venous incompetence. Uh, I would pull in my belly terrible. Uh, so all of my venous volume would be stuck in my belly. Okay. So one of my main treatments was uh, an abdominal corset. Uh, so I literally was wrapped in a corset with, um, and I had thick um, uh, tights on my legs that I would wear uh, job stockings. Uh, so compression hose. Yeah, so compression stops the blood from pooling in that area. Yeah, so and then I would be wrapped in, actually, it, I had usually a two uh, corsets on. And so I committed to doing uh, the exercise program. So a lot of it was in the pool, uh, which is great because you're weightless. And so it, got, it gave me my life back gradually. Uh, so I made a couple of attempts before that to go back to work and just could not tolerate it. Uh, a lot of my doctors actually uh, pleaded with me to uh, apply for disability. Um, I actually did, and I actually was granted it very quick out of the gate. Um, and I sat in uh, the attorney's office and I decided to uh, say, no, that's not how I want to be. I want to fight, get my health back. I want to figure it out what's wrong with me and figure out what the true treatment is. And I walked out of the disability attorney's office. So from there, I actually... Uh, on a whim, applied for a job uh, in the cardiac rehab unit um, for my hospital system. It was a new uh, open unit or newly to open unit. And I sold my boss on taking my patients on a journey with me to get my health back. Okay. So I opened up the cardiac rehab unit July 25th, five years ago. Okay. Um, we, I opened it as uh, two days a week with six machines. I'm currently five days a week with 11 pieces of equipment. And my um, company has announced plans to uh, actually expand me again. Um, so we're going for it, which is great. So, yeah, as I opened up the unit, it was tough for me to teach patients on health and wellness, being 85 pounds heavier. So I really started, and I opened it up with a coworker who wasn't as healthy as well. So I started making a lot of connections of diet. And um, so I, one of the first things I reduced was uh, artificial sweeteners. Okay. And I lost seven pounds in seven days. I made the connection that my body was responding to them. Um, I then went through all the artificial colorants, sugar, um, waning down. So it was almost trial and error for you. Yes. And um, okay. at the time, too, I 
didn't mention that. Um, so I was formally diagnosed with lupus, uh, and I was tested positive because a lot of people that have. Um, so, anyways, I should back up. Uh, I ended up. I had to fight to get genetic testing once again um, with my insurance, and I did test positive for Ehlers Danlos system. Um, syndrome. And that's the disease of the connectivity tissue, right? Yes. Uh -huh. And so I am hypermobile. So a lot of um, people that have pets have uh, allergies. Not a lot of people, but... Higher percentage. Yes. And so some people that have hypermobile EDS also have uh, mast cell disease. So it's like allergies to the 100th degree. Hmm. Um, so right before I went plant-based, which is uh, almost three years ago now, completely plant-based. I was only able to tolerate five foods, not really realizing that I wasn't really tolerating them at all. Um, I, In all of my allergy testing, I tested positive for uh, a lectin and a pectin allergy. So I was not allowed to have any fruit at all. Uh, my coworkers had to be trained to give me a, uh, an epinephrine shot. I reacted to artificial perfume, smoke, um, latex, any type of fruit. Wow. That had to be hard. Yeah, it was very hard because uh, I still don't digest food great because of the EDS, but I'm way better. So um, I ended up... I had two patients in my unit that were both very uh, big athletes and both had um, heart events. So both of them had heart attacks while competing in races. Okay. And uh, they came to me and had significant health issues after that. And uh, most people don't know that about 60% of women uh, experience sudden cardiac death as their first symptom and it's a little bit lower for men i think it's about 50 percent uh and both of them had no heart issues at all um, but both of them very much grieved who they were before yeah um and so we were in the unit and i was really trying to help them and they'd been going back and forth to the hospital and i had i looked up at the tv and i saw dr joel khan was on tv and I had worked for him, uh, it's like 11 years ago now, in his office. I was this phone screening nurse, so I know, knew Joel pretty well. And he was on the TV with Paul Chatlin. And they were talking about the very first PBNSG meeting or plant-based nutrition support group. And they were going to have it. And I looked at both the patients. I'm like, you guys should go and do this. You guys, this is like, I know this is the answer for you. And they said... We'll go, Shannon, but you have to come. And I said, well, I can't. I was flying to Florida at 7 o'clock the next morning. and just couldn't go. And so, and they both had had all their medications. One had almost had tripled his medications. was just a mess from beta blockers and all those. And so uh, I got back from Florida. I came back 10 days later. And both of them had color in their face. They already had experienced such amazing health benefits and so they said shannon you have to do it and i'm like you know you know i actually being an athlete my whole life i um i'm like yeah i, don't, I can't you know not take a challenge so i actually jumped in and uh it took me about two weeks to get ready and um, so I, when was this this was two and a half two and a half years ago yeah two and a half years ago okay and so up to that point like you were still you still had meat added in your diet like your doctors recommended yeah how long had you been like reducing the artificial sugar and colors and that kind of stuff yeah i've had uh so all of that has been five and a half years now okay. and then so i really wasn't eating much junk and i had dropped before i went completely plant-based i had dropped 40 of the 85 okay. and that was just from dropping the artificial sweeteners and yeah stuff like that. yep okay. all that artificial colorants i really was really watching and i really and truly was only eating meat one to two days one of the big mistakes that I made, and I actually like to tell people about my mistakes, especially when I'm teaching plant-based nutrition because I teach it now, 
um, about the mistakes that I made. And I'm very much an open book for most of my patients or most of our members in PBN Shaving. I actually, one of the things I was eating was a protein bar. Okay. I kind of heard about the people from Quest and they had sent me a bunch of bars, not to say anything bad about them and not really realizing they had weight in them. And uh, yeah. I was only eating one here or there. So when I went plant-based, I actually went raw for four months and my allergist had said that she actually, she still is a hundred percent behind me. And she said, I want you to wait, let's do raw for four months and then we'll start to try to reintroduce fruit. And okay. I went raw. Uh, I felt amazing. So what did your diet look like on a raw diet for that four months? I I ate a lot of salads. I ate a lot of oatmeal, dry. I started adding way more greens. Uh, And I did. I did a lot of, like I would call it, coleslaw dishes. So that was a lot of trial and error. Nuts and seeds, that kind of stuff? Yep. A lot of that. I assume no legumes because you don't eat those raw. Yep. Yeah. None of that. And so then uh, my allergist thought I was ready. Um, I had shown no, none of the enzymes or none of the lab values for the mast cell disease, all that had okay. really started to get well. So we started adding, I think it was a fruit a week. And I would, let, I had, my work was right next door, a couple doors down from a, a fruit market. I would buy a fruit. I would take it to her office and we would eat. Fruit and, and all that time when I had such issues with mast cell disease, I craved fruit. That was the only thing I craved. And I had no reactions That's to awesome. any fruit. We, of course, stayed away from the fruits that they don't, that they recommend or don't recommend that you hold when you have latex allergies because I've been in healthcare for 29 years. But I actually just recently uh, have added mango and a little bit of papaya. Um, back in and have very minimal reactions to those, which is amazing because I awesome. could never have dreamt of e- ever eating those again. So, um, so I started eating all that, and then we started adding some of the other items back. So at that point, I still had lupus, and I still had active labs for lupus. I had my last lupus flare. At about, was it the four? It might have been right around the time. That four months of eating raw, we'd hit winter in Michigan, and I was just cold. I was freezing cold. And so I just needed hot foods added back in here and there. So with my allergist, too, we started adding more. of uh, Because having all the autoimmune issues that I've had, she was leery about me eating um some of the nightshades we call it yeah um so that was another thing so those are tomatoes and yep. uh, peppers and yeah yes so in all of that my health just dramatic i mean my coworkers would tell you that i was a type a ruler in the cardiac rehab unit and i just emerged off this broom and I floated around, and um, so in all, uh, I have uh, reverse diabetes. I no longer take any medications for diabetes. Hemoglobin A1C, the last time I had it drawn, was 4.8. And my triglycerides, the last time I had those, were 135. And you said they were over 400 before. Yes, 459. Wow. I should back up the story a little bit. Um, my dad had a stroke at age 30. Oh, wow. Right after that, he actually was diagnosed with a rare type 1 late onset diabetes. He never produced insulin again. Oh, wow. At about 45, he had one of the first angioplasties um, there. They didn't have stenting back then. And at the age of 60, he had come up to Michigan to see my brother graduate with a master's in teaching, and on Mother's Day told me that he had tooth pain and was gray, ashen in color, and I drove him into the hospital that I had worked. Um, He had passed the stress test three days prior to this. Uh, He ended up having to have, he had had a small heart attack. Uh, He had to have triple bypass. Oh, wow. Um, he didn't do very well initially post-op. Uh, he had to go back in 
to the hospital because he's having issues with his blood cell typing was uh, changing or his cell shapes were changing. Okay. Um, so he went back in the hospital for, I think it was 11 days, and um, he actually passed his stress test to get into cardiac rehab, and he died five months post-op uh, from the open-heart surgery. Uh, so he's been gone 11 years. So in my health journey, I grew up with a, a sick parent, you know, yeah. basically my whole life. He had the stroke when I think it was in the fifth grade. I didn't want that for my children. And so I started to think of stuff like that. Uh, okay, so if I'm, you know, 40, I'm only going to have 20 years. And that's been... Yeah. A goal of mine was to outlive my dad. And so, yeah, I had at one point a team of 12 doctors. So I had with the lupus, I had kidney involvement, I had lung involvement, and I had heart involvement. So I had Dr. Grubb as the electrophysiologist, and I had uh, a regular cardiologist. Um, And I just was like a series of doctor's appointments. So before going completely plant-based, I was taking plaque when I for lupus, they actually had decided they were going to put me on a chemotherapy. I took one dose of methotrexate, ended up in the hospital with a horrible reaction to it. Uh, then the next step was to put me on the IV chemo. And I was like, no, there has to be another way. And of course, all the doctors tell you, no, nope, you have to do that or you're, uh, you know, you're not a great patient. And yeah. I was like, no. So uh, just like recently, I went in to see my rheumatologist, and she's like, oh, my God, Shannon, you look amazing, and how you doing? And we're talking away, and she's like, I'm just so glad that this is great. This, you're proof that these medications work, and she's going on and on and I said, I've not taken Plaquenil in a year now. And she was like, <laughs> what? And I says, yeah, I like him in here to get my labs to see where we were. And I said, I, I called and talked to your nurse and said I was going off to try it. And um, she's like, oh, my God. So the next thing you know, she wants to put me on a presentation. And so how long, how long plant-based before you were able to go off that medication? Uh, I Six months, yeah. I came off. Oh, wow. I took myself off. So, uh, yeah, and I've had, I think, three draws since then. And my the last two showed no lupus activity. My kidney function is normal. I'm breathing so much better, so much clearer. So I had, and I saw the cardiologist, and they gave me clearance to uh, start running again. That was in January of this past year. Okay. Um, and in May, I signed up for a half marathon, and I completed that in October. I did the free, uh, Detroit Free Press half marathon, uh, the international one, and I ran the entire distance. That's just this last October. Yep. Two hours. Congratulations. And, thank you. Two hours, 29 minutes. So, yeah, to me, uh, it just has been a world of difference uh, having, being plant based. Uh, I just have so much energy. It's amazing. Um, I now mentor interns and high school students in my cardiac rehab unit, and I run circles around them. And um, they don't, like, realize, like, what the food is that they're putting into their body. And um, I have patients right now that range all the way from 28 to 95, and my sickest patients are actually the 30-year-olds. And the reason why they are is they're being raised that, you know, uh, fast food is food. Yeah. They don't realize the consequences of putting sodas, Doritos, and that inside their body. And, you know, even, like, the caramel coloring in sodas, um, I had a friend call me up. She was devastated. Her husband was on a vent in one of the local hospitals and was in ICU. And so I go in there and I asked the nurses to talk to me and she had signed my permission for them to talk to me. And he was in kidney failure and they, they were dialyzing him when I was there. And I'm like, what's going on? And they said he had like crystal formations so I came outside and I talked to my friend and I'm like, what's, what's he eating? And I mean, he, it was just junk. But the yeah. number one thing was he was drinking a 12 pack of diet pop a night. 
Oh my getting God. through a midnight shift. And I said, take it out. You can't have any more of that. Oh and goodness, so yeah. he literally stopped drinking the soda. His kidney function at the six month mark is completely normal. And he's like lost, I think, 25 pounds and he looks amazing. Now, he wouldn't go plant based, but uh, he's eating way more plants. And he stepped towards healthful living helps, right? Mm -hmm. Not drinking 12 things of diet pop is, is a good step. Yes, yeah. So I actually teach plant based nutrition in, to my patients in um, my Kai Freehab unit, and then I mentor members of PBNSG. So teaching your patients at the cardiac unit, yes. uh, is that part of, um, like, is that an institutionalized goal now, or is that just something you take upon yourself? Yes, I actually, um, I started off as myself, and, uh, you know, of course, they tell you, oh, teach them the standard American diet. But the problem is, is that as the healthcare system moves forward, we have so many patients that just have such severe comorbidities. I mean, it's yeah. not just heart disease anymore. It's diabetes. It's all these other factors. And so I'll have patients that will come to me or members and they'll say, okay, I need to figure out what foods I can have. I'm diabetic, I have heart disease, I'm on yeah. Coumadin, and I'm in kidney failure. And you're like, oh my God, where do I start? Well, the good thing is it's one diet that cures all of those things. Yes. Right. So I can't, to me, advocate teaching anything other than plant-based nutrition. And, of um, course. So I uh, now... Kind of something interesting is happening is uh, a lot of times that patients or members will see me and having lost 85 pounds, and I actually found the plant-based fountain of youth too with that, they actually stereotype me as always have been this thing because I'm, I'm pretty thin and tiny, but I'm a little Irish lady and a little leprechaun <laughs> are that small, you know. And so now they actually don't want to listen to me so, uh, or they misjudge me. So what we've done is actually put up in my unit my before and after pictures. And my okay. passport picture is unrecognizable. And some of the pictures I've posted on Facebook, the same thing. They're like, that isn't the same person. So then I had to put some pictures up that was like a step for me, kind of show the midway pictures and... Yeah, like a progression. Yeah, I only yeah. teach it now because it really and truly is the only way to go because moderation, like a lot of times, like even Dr. Greger will say, uh, do you want moderate heart disease? Do you want moderate right. diabetes? Do you want moderate uh, obesity? And there is not many Americans that can do moderation. Well, moderation is a word that has many meanings. It does, like, yeah. I, I take, I, the only way I agree with a moderate diet is you moderate in regards to total caloric input. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So even, even though I'm eating um, nothing but sweet potato fries, I want to moderate that because I don't want to eat 10,000 calories of sweet right. potato fries. Yes. So I moderate in that regard, but it's not, uh, I'm moderating in how many cookies or cake I have because those are not part of a healthful diet. Right. Yes. So it depends on the, the context you're using the word moderation. Cause yes, the way most people, people use moderation as an excuse. Right. Yeah. So the big change for you was really when you started being active in the plant-based nutrition support group. Yes. Yeah, so I ended up, I had Paul come to, I um, run a support group out of my cardiac rehab unit and I had um, Paul come and speak to my group. And the person he spoke to the most was me because I actually enjoyed it. And he challenged me to come to one of their meetings. And so they have, they still have a monthly meeting and it's usually in the Birmingham, Michigan area. And so I came to that first meeting and I've only missed one in the course of those two years, two and a half years now. 
Uh, and I only missed this last one in September because I was down in New Orleans for the American Association for Cardiovascular Rehab Professionals Conference. And so I've met the likes of Dr. Greger, Dr. Campbell, Nelson Campbell, uh, Lanny Mulrath, all the big names, Rich Roll we just hosted, Rip Esselstyn. Dr. Esselstyn, we have Chef AJ coming up. Well, I started getting involved, and I instantly, Paul and I connected on an amazing level very quickly. Um, and I had been looking for something to get involved with, and I had um, dabbled a little bit with some nonprofit groups, but I wasn't fully behind their mission. Um, I wasn't sure where I fit in, but instantly, the minute I met Paul, I was like, I want him to be my friend forever, and <laughs> I want to I want to get behind him and help him. So, so Paul is the founder of yes. the Plant Based Support Group. Yeah, yeah, Paul Chatlin, and uh, he's one of my best friends now. So uh, he's amazing. And so I started getting um, involved as a volunteer um, and helping out here and there. So now you direct the small groups. Yeah. And so I, uh, so our small groups were started by Paul and Betsy Larder, who is now in her medical residency in the Cincinnati area. Um, so she started the group. So she had to uh, leave a couple months after that, of course, to uh, head down to Cincinnati for a residency. Um, so I took over. Um, we currently have 16 small groups uh, throughout the state of Michigan. I have quite a few people that contact me, uh, actually all around the United States, about setting up a small group. And what do those small groups do? Uh, they're amazing. So we have, uh, PBNC has the once a month uh, meetings where we host the big speakers. But what okay. the small groups do is we actually... Um, they're in several cities around the Detroit area. Um, and we will get um, members in PBNSG that will log in and we will host anywhere from, uh, we invite everybody. Uh, so I actually love it when plant curious people, so I call them plant curious that I want to learn more, all the way to plant confident. So someone that's been a confident plant based eater. And so yeah. we do have a host in each of the city and so i will uh someone comes on our website and asks to join a small group and i'll find out where they live and then i will uh forward the email to the host okay so it's kind of a support group yeah so it's like a small support group so okay. it's really great because it's more socialization um, so a lot of people just want to know that there's other plant-based eaters out there yeah. and there's other people burning beans and they're not sure what to cook or how do you get through a work week? So do you provide meal plans for them or we, just generalities or? Yeah, I actually, um, I've been to over, I think 95 of them. I actually, I love it. Uh, I just love it. And so they're all very different. So some of them have potluck. Um, so we give them like guidelines of what to talk about. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, I usually try to go to most of them um, because we will have, you'll get some members in there that are new and have a lot of questions. Um, and so I will, you know, try to handle most of the questions uh, but a lot of our, uh, group leaders are amazing and they are plant confident, so they can handle a lot of the questions. Um, yeah. and then we have, uh, I saw quite a trend in, um, what some of the needs of the small groups were. So I said, a lot of these people want to know what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, so they want, they're ready to go, but they just don't quite know how to go about it. Um, and so we did develop some transition classes uh, for people that are newly transitioning. So we do have those once a month. And um, lately, uh, so everybody would tell you I'm very creative and very forward thinking about community needs and community needs assessments. And um, actually now with the hospital that I work for, I've been put on the community needs for uh, several cities 
Um, so they are actually putting me in a city to see kind of, to make connections and see what our needs are in each of the areas. So lately I just had a couple brainchilds and some of them have been, we need to develop a small group that is for busy moms. So how can we get through the whole work week and feeding our kids and what's some steps we can do to get out of the house quicker in the morning or get meals yeah. done. And um, yeah, so time saving. Yes. Yeah, for busy people. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, we have that in development. And then we actually are developing a group that's going to be in the city of Detroit that actually will have children in there. And our goal with that is to, one, develop ways to get food to lower socioeconomic um, areas. And we have, it was, a, it's a family that really inspired me. They uh, do not have many resources to food at all. And um, so I've actually gone to several food pantries to see what their offerings are, to see if we can get access to fresh foods. But I ended up finding out that a lot of food pantries have beans and rice and um, people aren't taking them. And so we're working on ways to educate the moms in those okay. areas how to cook beans and rice, how to make it healthy and uh, for low cost. And um, all the food pantries are actually very receptive, which is amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, the one of the hardest obstacles we have to face is the cheaply available junk food. Yes. Right? Like it's often cheaper to get the char fried chicken than it is to get the salad. Yes, and I actually, even in um, my cardiac rehab unit, I will, a couple of times a year, I'll go into the dollar store and I'll buy five items. And I will actually put those items on the counter. And I actually use those items to, one, teach people how to read food labels. And the other yeah. thing I teach them is how to look for the ingredients and what are those ingredients that's actually an amazing way to open up the door to plant-based teaching. Because yeah. I've had some patients uh, for actually four years and um, that they will continue to stay on with me and um, pay. Uh, but they had no interest in plant-based nutrition. But when they actually attend one of those classes that I teach, yeah. they're like, where do we sign up, Shannon? I want help. What's the Dunning-Kruger effect a little bit there where people that are less knowledgeable tend to be more confident about what they know and then people that are more knowledgeable tend to be less confident and it really is you don't know what you don't know and so without any basic understanding of nutrition you're like no I, I got all of that I don't need to look at labels and then you get that one lesson on what the labels actually mean and you're like holy crap I didn't know any of this yes yeah right? it's it's so true. And I mean, I've even had patients that were out of the program for a year, come back and say, I'm, I'm miserable. Now, a lot of people don't realize either that they feel so bad. And even me, in some parts of my illness, I didn't realize that I felt that bad. And now, like, even looking at the pictures, like, I never yeah. smiled. I mean, you could just see in some of those pictures how ill I was. People get accustomed to things, right? Yes. And um, the other thing that we're doing in PBNSG is something I'm very passionate about is, um, so over the course of working in medicine for 29 years, um, you definitely get people that believe that their doctors know everything. And so, yeah. and there are some amazing, talented doctors that are just so intelligent. But in the United States, a doctor can graduate from medical school with no nutrition training at all. Yeah, I think the average is like 24 hours of nutrition. Yes, and so uh, PBNSG has made it their mission to get into the medical schools yeah. and teach. So I've actually been in Wayne State University and Michigan State University. That's awesome. And to open up the minds of the medical students of you know, hey, let's give nutrition, let's write prescriptions. Because even um, I get patients that will come into cardiac rehab and some of the ladies uh, have never exercised ever or they don't want to oh exercise God. because they don't want yeah. their hairs to get messed up. 
And I tell them, I says, you know, exercise is actually one of the most underutilized antidepressant and anti-anxiety agents that are is out there. And yeah. if we can retrain the doctors to say, hey, let's eat better and let's um, exercise. And so I've even told the doctors, uh, I mean, I take patients to, or members to the grocery store. I take them to restaurants. I you know, do all of that and never charge them a dime uh, because I want people to experience what I've experienced and that yeah. is really healthy. And um, But it is sad because I have had several doctors that have come through my program and they truly do not know about nutrition. And even my own regular general practitioner, uh, I went and saw him recently and um, in the course of all this, I was able to come off of 26 medications, and I, wow. I have to stay on four now. And two of them are actually thyroid medications because once you lose thyroid tissue, you can't regenerate it back. And I was really hoping that I could, but that I will be on thyroid medicine for the rest of my life. And so I went and saw my doctor the other day, and uh, he weighs me, checks me out, and he's like, oh, my God. And I was his 16th patient, and I was the only patient that day that was in a normal body weight. Oh, wow. That's sad. And um, I actually decided to pick his brain and asked him what he ate. And, yeah, chicken wings and uh, cereal, and it was just all junk. And I've been seeing him now for, I think, 20 years, I want to say. And I mean, he is the exact same age as me. And most people guess me to be about eight to 10 years younger than what I am. And uh, I would have guessed that he's like 10 years older. I mean, he just looks yeah. terrible. He looks tired. He looks overweight. He just looks very unhealthy. And so I was like, Steve, you need to get going. Come to my meetings. And, uh, He's like, I, I think I should, Shannon. And I'm like, I know you should. And um, I said, I already had convinced my dermatologist to come to some of our meetings. And he's completely plant-based now. And Oh, that's awesome. Um, the cardiologist that runs our program is very close to getting there. And she was one of those ones I'm never going to, and that's not going to happen, Shannon. And... Um, one of the ladies that runs a gym that I've done a lot of events with, she actually was a professional triathlete, uh, is training for a 100-mile ultra uh, marathon run, and uh, she's three weeks plant-based now, and she's like, I just feel light, you know, and I <laughs> says, I know, there you go. So here's somebody that was a professional athlete that she's like, I'm just going for it, and I'm like, yeah. that's amazing. So... You know, even, uh, you know, because I've had people say, oh, you've joined a cult. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they just go on and on and on. And, and the funny thing happened not that long ago. Uh, it came out that a patient, the minute I said plant-based, he just shut down. And so it, he comes to me like about an hour later and he says, Hey Shannon, he goes. So are you a vegan? And I and you know it's easier for some people to identify with that. So I use it interchangeably. But um, you know, and he seemed like he understood that more. So I said, Yes, I'm a vegan. He's like, Well, you don't look like a vegan. And I said, So what does a vegan look like? And he says, Like kind of crazy. And I said, So can you go home? I go. I want you to look up on your computer. And bring me back tomorrow some pictures of what vegans look like. Yeah. And, and oh my God, he brought in these pictures, and all of them had tattoos and dreadlocks or mohawks and uh, <laughs> gay earrings. And I says, Well, this is what this one looks like, you know. And he goes, Shannon, you're just too pretty to be a vegan. And I'm like, that's why I am a vegan. I said, because that's what it does to you. It makes you pretty on the inside. And so, uh, and so, yeah, now this guy actually has been plant-based for a month. So I convinced him to try it out. But So if someone's listening right now and they're thinking about mending their own path, what's one piece of advice you could give them to like get started or... 
I always tell people, I think one of the biggest, uh, so one of the biggest barriers to change is social acceptance. And so, mm. you know, and I always tell people, uh, cause even my own family, what are we having for Thanksgiving, Shannon? Uh, we're not having one of those turducken things or whatever, Dolfer geezer, <laughs> whatever. And I'm like, no, I eat plants. I always tell people don't overcomplicate things. So a lot of members will try to do too much and then they will bring me recipes that have 16 ingredients in them. Yeah. And I'm, you know, with spices I've never heard of. And I will say no. And I will give them some very simple ones. I give them like a grocery list. And I will, uh, you know, refer them to our website. Um, the other thing is, is that join groups. So in Michigan, we have the luxury of having uh, this uh, here so I can put people in groups. And I'll even let members go to every small group just so it's helpful. It's it's great to have a social network around yes. of like-minded people. Yeah, and I even, like, I, when I'm even shopping, people will stop me and say, oh, you got a healthy shopping basket. Um, and then so I will get people that will ask me, are you a vegan? And I'm like, yeah, and they're just so happy to meet somebody else. Yeah. The other thing, you can find a lot of groups on Meetup. So there are groups in most areas, Um and then, you know, I will tell them uh, a lot of people when they go to make lifestyle changes and they have a small slip up, it's like it's over for them. Yeah. And I will tell people not to view that as a back step, view it as more of a side step and forgive yourself for that. And most people like even I, because I don't do gluten, um, I took that out when I went raw. Uh, anytime I've had it, it just makes me miserable. And so, but what I will tell people is, is if you view things as a sidestep and not this all or nothing approach, just get back on course. Yeah, you can take those as learning opportunities. Yeah, right? yeah. You react and judge how your body felt after you made that slip up. Right. And um, so, yeah, I think that's it. And, you know, just don't overcomplicate. Uh, you know, everybody, they can reach out to me. I actually teach when I teach to groups because um, I'll go around to the small groups. And if there's members in there that are struggling, uh, I'll teach the ball jar method. So uh, simplifying steps. Uh, so I teach it, you know, I usually batch cook on Sundays. I, yeah. um, will then portion it out into the ball jars. So breakfast ones, lunch ones, dinner ones, every day I grab three jars out. Cause a lot of times I, uh, travel to the small groups at night. And so I would show them exactly what I put in the ball jars. Yeah. how to keep produce fresh, and then I will take them to grocery store. So there's people out there like me uh, that will help you. But, yeah, just try to keep it as simple as possible. And I always emphasize that your taste buds will regenerate. Uh, of course, yeah. And, you know, the PCRM has an amazing 21-day vegan kickstart program. And so, yeah. And those are very simple recipes. But uh, I'm a big fan of McDougal. Uh, I, I love it that he puts all of his recipes online, and those yeah. are very simple ones. And I will have it starred which ones I like. And then I will, you know, tell them to get on blogs. And um, Instapots are big things with me. Chef AJ travels with her. She's coming in on December 13th, which is my birthday. And Happy early birthday. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they come to PBNSG. Uh, you'll see me. I usually hug every member. Uh, and, you know, they will, all the members, most of them uh, get my phone number somehow, and they'll call me and say, I'm struggling. Uh, can you help me? And I usually will talk to them and say, hey. Or uh, if I have free time, I'll meet them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your story. Thank you. Yeah, it was awesome. So. And good luck on your journey as it continues because we're, we're always continuing our journey. So yes, yes. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, this is the only way I want to live. So, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Mend It Pass podcast at www.menditpaths.com. 
Go to the website now and join the Mended Paths community. When you do, you'll get a free copy of the Mended Paths Back to Better Healthy Living Quick Reference Guide. Thanks so much for checking us out. See you all next time. Visit Mended Paths.com and get back to better.